Well, that's a tad complex. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Mr. Peter Bite video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we are looking at a video 8 machine and uh, I'm not going to say too much about what it actually is you can probably guess what it is to be fair um, just by the fact that it's a video Walkman um, I've got the uh, Panasonic uh, VHS portable unit here as well. Uh, this dates from about 1992 and um, it's, it's a portable unit, it uses a lead acid uh, battery to um, power it and obviously got mains as well and I've used this in, in a few videos actually to um, uh, test various machines and whatever so uh yes that's 1992 um uses a lead acid battery it's a very common battery used in a lot of panasonic portable kit from the 80s and early 90s and uh yeah it's um it's a great unit hi-fi stereo uh, it's only short play um but this uh, is something quite different and um, I've also have done a lot of uh, video 8 machines and I've, I've never actually recorded any of them um, probably because I've not done one for a couple of years but before then sort of in the, the year before that I did probably about a dozen machines and uh, I do actually have um, EV800 I think it is uh, that I will be featuring uh, shortly on the channel and also a Hi8 machine as well top of the range um, machine in the UK so yeah uh, watch out for those but um, let's have a look see what we have so this is a Sony GV8E uh, it's PAL and there is a tape in it, uh, bought off eBay uh, for not a massive amount of money. I can't remember how much it was now. Uh, but uh, the main reason it was so cheap is that it basically has no power supply. Totally untested. Uh, there is tape in it. So that'll be interesting to see what that's like. Um, but it did come with a battery. The battery was actually taped up um, with some yellow insulation tape. Somebody had obviously taken it apart to try and get it going. But you can see it's really quite badly leaked. It's an aftermarket battery, which is fine. Um, see, so I've just checked the um, thermal fuse. It's fine. But uh, obviously it's leaked and it's one tree dead. So what I have done... So I've bought a load of um, sub-sea cells. So um, these are slightly different to the standard C cell, uh, 1.2 volts. Uh, they're 1800 um, milliamp hours. Uh, these ones, I believe, are either 800 or 1200. So a um, little bit of a step up in quality. So I didn't go, to go for nickel metal hydride uh, because the charging circuit, I believe, would not do uh, any good for nickel metal hydride. So uh, sticking with NICAD. So um, you're probably want, wondering what's in this bo um, this packet here, this case even. <laughs> it's uh, actually a power supply. And this I bought separately uh, quite some time after buying this. I was keeping an eye out for a half decent one that had the battery eliminator plate plate. Um, so this particular one, this is the right one for this machine, this particular one, um, it used um, a barrel plug for the plate, the 
base plate, which then plugs in the bottom here. I've not actually done this before. This is totally untested, by the way. So to slide that in, uh, there is actually a CR, I think it's 3022 battery that's actually missing from there. So we'll pop one of those in um, as well, just for memory retention purposes. Um, I don't know whether any of this works. I've not tested it. I've not tested anything. Um, so yeah, I suppose um, we ought to give it a try. Uh, and I'm going to be really brave. I'm not going to worry about anything, and I have full faith in eBay and the sellers. Because uh, apparently the power supply is fully working. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so, here goes. Okay, so that tape's been laced. Uh, possibly. Yeah, because it's just unlaced. So let's put the power on. And fast forward. And nothing. Uh, that's actually just stopped. And it just sort of dies. Mm, that's not great. So let's just turn that back off again. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not happy at all, is it? Okay, so let's pull the power out from this. Just give it a full reset. Now, I have to see, say it's the first time I've seen one of these. So this is all new to me. And like I said, I've not tested it at all. So uh, you're witnessing this um, as I'm looking at this for the first time. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. There's no movement at all. Let's just take. I don't know whether that's going to. No, it's not going to fit. Let's just take the top off this if we can. It's really not happy. Okay, so let's just review what this is doing. Uh, let's pull the power. So unlaces, laces up, fine. You try and play and it just dies. Let's pull the power again. Power, oops. Power on. Try and eject. And it can't quite seem to. Eject. Uh, so I think this is probably why this ended up being stuck in a cupboard. 
and it looks like timing it looks like timing's out um which is a bit of a thing with these uh they have a mode switch with a plastic gear some of them anyway that um is pushed onto a brass um assembly yeah it's obviously something not right with the the timing on that so i suppose we better crack on and uh have a look hmm okay so just doing a bit more testing on this and um the switch there's a switch on the right hand side um, you can tell I've, I've never used one of these before, literally, as it's come out of the package. Um, so, you can hear the relay clicking over. Um, so, furthest to the back is um, the line-in out. Then we've got camera, then we have tuner. Well, I have no tuner. Um, there is nothing actually working with the tuner at all. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to be. Oh, cassettes. It's interesting. If I try and record, uh, it could be that the tabs, the. Um, little record protect switches flipped and what's on this tape I mean at the moment it doesn't seem to want to do anything hmm okay well interestingly um, one thing I did spot was I don't know what you call quite make that out but uh, there's a UBE switch um, which uh, Sony started doing quite a bit of um, with the HF950 for example um, you had the UB and the E so E for European PAL systems and um, UB for the UK so you just flip the switch makes life a lot easier um, as far as production goes you don't have to do UK specific um, models but uh, yeah we definitely have some fun issues I do wonder if maybe we do have some sort of power supply issues which wouldn't surprise me this probably does use surface mount uh, caps um, maybe i'm guessing here um and uh yeah they are problematic uh, when they get to this age definitely so i half expect there to be capacitor issues um i also expect there to be deck issues and uh yeah it's um at this stage, I'd say it's a bit of a warning that if you buy one of these off eBay um, and it's working, chances are it won't be for long. Um, not without a full service. So just be a bit wary. You need to buy one of these that's properly refurbished. Um, well, I say refurbished, disserviced and um, fixed. Um, because refurbishing these, obviously, new pinch roller at least um as well as a full clean and going through and uh that ain't gonna happen these days so you can't get the parts so uh okay well yeah let's take it apart and uh yeah see what uh what we can find so let's crack on Okay, so let's disassemble this. Now, I will say I've never taken one of these units apart uh, before. I have taken apart the um, well, camcorders and I have also taken apart um, the VCRs, full size eight uh, video eight uh, video cassette recorders. 
Um, so this is something sort of halfway between the two, I suppose. And uh, my initial thought was to just take the, the bottom off. But when you actually look, everything is sort of attached. Or well, there's numerous things attached um, to the base. And um, I downloaded the manual. Uh, this isn't all of it. It's just the bits I need for the uh, case disassembly. And nowhere in this disassembly does it say about removing the bottom cover. Um, what you actually do is you take off the top and then you take out the mechanism. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I've already taken off the, uh, the cassette lid, um, as you know. So, yeah, the next thing, and this does look to be in order. So, cassette lid, uh, take off the back antenna assembly um, housing and then take the top off so we're going to do it in that order so it does say about uh, taking this off and screws are arrowed Way deeper than I can get with that. And in theory, I should be able to pull this off. There we go. Sort of slightly clipped in. Or maybe it's just gunge. Or it could be, because it's got this um, Sort of odd paint. It's not like the rubberized paint, but it's um, it does feel a little bit tacky. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I think it might it might be a mixture of age and uh, yeah, something. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Then upper assembly cabinets. Um, I mean, all these screws are arrowed, so I'm just going to go around and take those out. Um, so we've got screw there. And what I should be doing as well, because these screws are all unique to their respective assemblies, is um, making sure I keep them safe. Um, and then there's two front. And these all look to be the same, so that's good. So far, anyway. And there's one round here. The others don't quite point to where the screw is, but you get the idea. That surely is not it. And then it does say there is a ribbon cable. I need to pull off. And there is the said ribbon cable. You can't really see that. Uh, there's a ribbon cable. So, that looks to be a push. The tabs job. And then we've got two connectors here. Uh, one, two. 
through. I'm just to come out really easily. So there's the top off. And of course, these ribbon connectors, you have to be a bit careful with them because they are getting quite fragile. So, first look inside. And uh, so it's had a bit of a bump there. Somehow, I don't know quite how that happened. This is the um, switch for the um, localization. So, UB for UK and E for Europe. Um, so, that's, that's it there. It's rather nice, isn't it? So, next thing is to remove the TT20 board, which is this board here. Yeah, because we don't want to move, remove the set compartment as such. I mean, it, yeah, it might have to happen, but we'll see. Uh, so, we have screw here. Actually, I might use the bigger. A ribbon cable there that needs to come undone. And uh, there's an earth strap there. Does it say about the earth strap? No, it doesn't. So this is supposed to just come out. Uh, it does look as if this board might have been out before. Right, so we need the soldering iron. Let's remove that. So let's power that on. So we've got an earthing um, strap here, uh, which goes over to. Uh, switch trying to kind of drift. Um, which is holding the board in. So, yeah, let's see it there. So we'll just warm the iron up. And uh, hook that out. While we wait for the iron, uh, let's just pull this screw out here. Just so we can get this out. And so far, I don't think I'd have trouble putting this back together. Um, looking at the screws on the way there sorted. There we go. This is literally just a lap joint onto the top. Uh, right, so we've got other stuff going on here. Uh, underneath. We've got two, these are lift up. Let's just lift up the tabs and comes out and then we've got a little connector here. Be careful with that, it looks very fragile. So that's that. Put those screws with that. So we're down to the deck. It's one of those things you can't really test <laughs> with, it, with it all open, uh, that's for sure. So, um, removal of the MD and SV35 board. Move the three slide knobs. So, one, two, and three. They all look the same. So that's good. So two here, and there's one here. Then, <clears throat> uh, let's see if I can guess, there's a speaker. Uh, so speaker needs to come out. Uh, 
and then we've got two screws underneath. Uh, in fact, all the screws are underneath. So we've got two screws here, here and here, two screws here and here. So I'll probably use this one for that. And it does look, it looks so tempting, because this looks as if you could like pry that out with a screwdriver, but I'm sure you couldn't. Uh, it's, it just looks really tempting. Oh, I just whip off the bottom and get straight to the bottom of the mech by after lifting the board, but uh, no. No, that's not how Sony want you to do it. So in theory, all of this should come out now. I'm a bit concerned that there's a bit of contamination going on. Uh, or has been going on. I don't quite know what's, what's up there. Okay, so there we go. It's lifting up. Um, connect to there. Uh, that's that. Um, do I want to undo these, I suppose I do. And then there's another one there. The earth type thing goes in there. And it does actually say about removing this board. Uh, I don't know whether I need to. See, there's a ribbon, a ribbon cable there as well, which I'd rather not remove if I don't have to. So, yeah, it's stuck down there. Uh, I suppose I could. Looks that ribbon cable looks a bit dodgy as well. Uh, I don't know if you see that. Probably not. Focus. Need some. This looks a bit distorted. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's that. Ooh. Uh, it's actually okay. It looks as if it's damaged, but it's not. Um, right, so that's that. So, board, SV35 board. So the SV35 board, actually unscrew it and it goes back this way. So this is the front of the machine, the front of the deck. What I do have to worry about is under here, which you probably can't see, is bending the cap slightly. Why that's so stuck? Oh, there we go. It is going. There we go. So, let's remove that. And remove that. I'm just trying desperately hard not to strain that ribbon cable. Which is easier said than done. Can I pull that out without damaging anything? Uh, what's that one? That's a pull, isn't it? So, the deck. Logic is a pull. That's probably deck logic and 
motor control. There we go. Oh, blimey. Ah, so there we go. Um, I can't see anything obvious wrong with this. But it's obviously not timed as it should. So I'm going to apologise now for the lack of light. Um, I've got quite a lot of light on and uh, it's still really difficult to get enough light to show you what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm just going to lift this board. Um, so again, these ribbon cables, these are just pull. Do these two screws and I don't know whether this is a good idea especially as that sideboard has just gone clunk but it's loose anyway so it, <clears throat> it is fine um, it's just sort of moving about a bit and sounds like I'm doing really horrible things to this deck. Um, this ribbon cable just goes to the other side of the, the, the board here. Uh, so, it's all good. But um, all of these here are the timing marks. And at the moment, it's looking like it is out of time somehow. Because uh, it's right at the end of the travel, and yet it's not lined up. But I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, that's something we'll have to discover as we go along. So, there it is in all its glory. So there's the mode switch. So there's the ribbon for the mode switch there. Uh, it's actually a proper switch rather than a rotary switch, which might be better, uh, might be more reliable. Um, but somehow this is completely out of, out of time. Um, I wonder what that is. The, um, reels are driven by capstan. You see there's a nylon belt there. I assume it's nylon. Now, when I think of it, um, this board I've decided to take off and it's, it's just literally, it just pops off. Um, get it sort of to its furthest extent. And then it'll either pop off like it did just then, or it will just unclip. Put it on is the reverse of that, but making sure the plastic behind doesn't foul it. Quite cool. Like that. So there we go. It's actually quite well stripped down. But it's actually not actually that difficult to remove that board now. Uh, so I might just do that just for the sake of being careful. There's that board. So that just looks like an interconnect board. Uh, it's literally doing nothing else but connecting uh, all the logic side of things. So it does look to be a, a mode switch as well. There. I don't know you can see it. There. A mode switch there. So, some sort of, almost looks like a wall effect, but uh, I don't know. Uh, yes, it is. Oh, that's um, that's one spool. So these are hall effects for the spools. So we've got one here, one here. So, uh, yeah, that's actually really cool. 
Uh, oh yeah, and then you've got some connections then to the switches, which detect the cassette. Um, we are actually at a point where we can disconnect everything. So let's do that. Let's get this board off. It'll make it make it easier. It means I don't damage stuff. Well, he says. There we go. Boards off. <sighs> Phew. So we just have the deck as it stands in all its glory. So I suppose it would better work out how on earth I'm going to um, work on this and uh, yeah, get it retimed or check timing. And uh, yeah, take it from there. So, I've just had a look at the manual, and the manual I have has no deck alignment um, section to it, so I am a bit stuck. Um, now, my thinking is, I do have other Video 8 um, manuals, but this deck is quite different, actually, um, to the other machines that I've worked on. Uh, it's similar, but not not very you know it's yeah <sighs> it's just like oh um so uh i think what i'll do is i'm gonna leave this here now uh this will be part one uh, it's really quite a long video and um i will try and find some more information on this deck um i will share the manual um the link to the manual that I already have uh, for this, which is mainly the electronics and how to take it apart. Uh, so I'll put a link to that in the description. But uh, as it stands, I, I just don't know. I don't know if this is out of time, um, but I can't get it back. I can't get it forward. Um, I quite fancy taking these two screws out and dropping this motor out uh just so i can adjust or just just run the um the logic the the logic the um the loading and lacing and everything else so yeah anyway um keep an eye on the channel uh for part two of this um deck this machine i am so keen to get this working uh, I would love to get this working. It's uh, there's such great units, and um, just to put it up against Panasonic as well. Um, I mean, this predates the Panasonic as 1988, um, and the Panasonic's 91, 92 ish. Um, so yeah, it's it's sort of three, four years earlier, and I mean, this is amazing. It's just amazing um, kit. And you think, I mean, you look back to like machines five years previous to this, and yeah, I mean, they were, they were great machines, but I mean, look where it went in five years. It just went to this sort of miniaturization. And the technology behind Video 8 um, is amazing. It really is amazing. And it, in many ways, it's my favorite video formats um in the consumer side of things just because it was so clever and it was sort of a putting together of things like betamax but also um v2000 video 2000 there's an awful lot going on that's similar to video 2000 with these decks so it, they're great they really are great and it's a shame they never really took off as a mainstream format, but of course VHS was so well established. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And it's worth subscribing because I will be doing quite a few more Video 8 uh, machines. And uh, see you in another video. Bye for now.